obviously because you've, you've worked with Ken now a few times over the past few years, how is your process writing? Because and obviously the films have strong social themes, but this one is probably the most humorous film mm. that yourself or Ken have, have done in a while. How do you get that realism into the script? And is it just to maybe write looser to give like Eric or to give Steve a chance to maybe expand on certain scenes of dialogue? I mean, it's all very carefully scripted, you know, and that's you know that's, that's, it, it's, that's, that's a story. That's but you know, they, but they have you know freedom within that to make it their own too, you know. But um, you know, it's it's um, I suppose the the secret is is really trying to get a strong premise, a good narrative, and you know, three dimensional characters. That's it's always the challenge, you know. And obviously, the the last couple of films we made, the Free World and, and the Wind That Shakes the Barley, which was an absolute joy to, to yeah. do really. And was very important for us, but you know this film is—it's got a lighter tone on the surface, you know, and um, so it's nice to try different things. It was nice to write something that is, that has actually got you know quite a lot of humour in it. Came yeah. actually a great sense of humour. I mean, everybody will remember the, the sardine conference when Eric was came, you know, came back. You know, I remember seeing that and laughing my head off, and I thought You're that guy job. has got a bottle. Yeah. And secondly, you know. It was. I just thought it was absolutely hilarious. And I was sure and convinced that, you know, Eric had just a, a great sense of humour, and that's the way it was. He was prepared to laugh at himself and a twinkle in his eye, and thought it was really important to have that tone to the film, yeah. you know. But at the same time, the comedy in the film only works because the fictional character's pain is real. It is a grandfather who hasn't sorted out his life, who is overwhelmed by life, as many of us are at different points in our life. He's got panic attacks. He hasn't sorted out a relationship from 30 years ago. When I was young, I always assumed they would, would sort out our problems when you got to that age. Yeah. Uh, the reality is we don't. And sometimes we lack insight or courage or confidence. And what was really, really important when I came to write the script was when I talked to Eric about this fictional character, he actually had you know, insight and real sympathy you know, for someone who was so fragile. And, um, and that's the heart of the story, really, our fragility and the power of friendship. And so, if we hadn't had that kind of spirit in common, I don't think it would have come together. Because a film is massively collaborative. It takes a lot of people. We sink or swim together, you yeah. know? And in many ways, I suppose, that is the, that is the subtext to the film as well. And it feels very much like the mm -hmm. real Manchester. This is mm -hmm. working class Manchester. This is where mm -hmm. Eric's been a god for a long time now. How, how was mm -hmm. it going back into Manchester mm -hmm. and seeing these guys and seeing these people that have worshipped you for? For many many years, did you enjoy reconnecting yeah. with the fans again? Yeah, yeah, yeah it was uh, it was great. Yeah. Mm. I, I, I go back to, to United once once a year and, and, and at Old Trafford. This one was different. Yeah, I like this this experience because it's uh, yeah, it's about the past also, even if it's a fiction. Mm. Uh, about the past and also the present yeah. and the future, uh, because we hope that uh, people will uh, will enjoy it as, and will uh, love it as we like it and we love it. So, are you are, are either of you surprised by the reactions? It's been incredibly well received and deservedly so. It has to be said. Or are you surprised by the reaction that it's been taken in so well even before its initial release? Um, they well, always want a movie to be successful, obviously. Yeah, I mean, but, well, I never take anything for granted, really. I think half of the equation is the film, and the second half of the equation is the imagination and the life experience of the, of the, of the audience. And everybody will see it differently. Like, someone reads a book, or they'll, they'll always judge it differently. But so far, we've, um, we've been very, very lucky. There's been a very, very warm response to it. You know, not only people who like football, but just people who... Um, you know, just you know, who, who would not be interested in football because it's not—it's not actually a football film. I don't—I think making the film about football is not very interesting because the real game is so exciting. We do something else, and um, and there's been there's been a great response in France, Eric. I think hasn't well, there? Premier at the Cannes Film Festival, of course. Yeah. Yeah. That must have been yeah. a nice experience <coughs> yeah. to go back to France with the movie and have it so well received. Mm -hmm. Um, and actually, speaking of you mentioned the wind that shakes the barley there, mm -hmm. it's that was one of the biggest box office hits in, in Irish, mm -hmm. in Irish cinema mm -hmm. history. You must be incredibly proud of the film and mm -hmm. how well it's gone down and how well it's, mm -hmm. you know, it's still gone down. People are still watching the movie. Well, it was a it was a wonderful project to be involved in, um, but you don't set out to me. <laughs> you can't set out to make yeah. a, a hit. All you can try and do is just try and connect with the story, try and make it truthful, try and capture the contradictions. And the great beauty in, in that story was actually going back and trying to imagine 
what life was like for these young men in, in the flying columns. Mm -hmm. And um, that was a tremendous kind of, you know, challenge. But I suppose the most satisfying thing was that people in Ireland, you know, I seemed to identify it and thought it was a truthful, you know, um, truthful representation of, you know, many of the different contradictions of yeah, that time. People, people expected, I think, to be Irish filmmakers. It was that kind yeah, of yeah, yeah. loyal to the time and everything that went on. Yeah, yeah, but again, again, we had a mar marvellous team, brilliant Irish actors who made it come to life. And like I say, you can only make a film with a, with a good team. And we had a fabulous team for, for that film. And I'll always have very precious memories of it. You know, my own, my own family come from, you know, Limerick. And um, my own grandfather, you know, had weapons in, the, in his barn. Uh, my own uncle Pat told me these stories, you know, and so there was family connection too that really helped me try and imagine what life was like for, for many of these men. There, a man at 30 in the flying car was an old man, so many of them were very young and had to take on great responsibility at a very young age. So it was a, it was a, it was a marvellous project to be involved in. It's a very personal project as well, obviously. Pardon? It's a very personal project as well, obviously. Yeah. So. But I think you have to make every project personal yeah. because if you don't enter into it and and then um, try and imagine the world from the point of view of all those characters. You know, and not to repeat something that's gone on before, it's a, it's a huge challenge. But um, if you have a, a good team around you, it makes a lot of difference. Okay, there's yeah. final question, I won't keep you as much longer. Mm -hmm. Was there a chance that you may be working together again? I know Eric, obviously you're a big fan of, of Ken and Paul, and the film is going to do very well and has been very well received. Would you like to work together again, or is there any future plans to work together again? I think they have new projects. And I also have a new project, so in the near future, no, but uh, we'll see. So you're playing a martial arts expert in mm -hmm. the movie, which you're, you're playing a martial arts expert in the film with your wife, is it next? Is the film coming out? Uh, no, I, I walked in two, two movies in, uh, after looking for a rig, and uh, it will be out. Uh, it will op open in France between September and December. And after, yeah, I walk in the theatre next January yeah, mm -hmm. with my wife. Uh, she will direct me. <laughs> <laughs> just a reason, just an actual title now for the rest of the Okay, well, guys, thank you very much for speaking to me. I really appreciate it. It's a pleasure, thank All you. Right.